I want you to stand with me for the, for the reading of God's word today. We are in Psalms chapter 42, verse 1. Here we go. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where, where, where can I go and stand before? When can I go and stand before him? Day and night, I have only tears for food. While my enemies continually taunt me, saying, where is the God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the, amidst the sound of the celebration. Why am I so discouraged? You ever felt like that? Why is my heart so sad? The psalmist is saying, I used to be at the front of the line. I used to go after God, but there's just something Something going on in my inner being that's, that's, I'm just discouraged, a circumstance, a situation. But then he begins to preach to himself, but I'm going to put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior, and my God. Now I'm deeply discouraged. I want to skip down to verse 9. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Their taunts break my bones. They scoff, where is this God of yours? Why am I so discouraged? That's like the fifth time he said that. Why is my heart so sad? Yet I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the honesty of Scripture, the men and women who wrote it. Lord, we're grateful for, uh, uh, for, for you allowing people to be real. And, Lord, that, that, that in this world we'll have tribulation, but we, we can be of good cheer, for you have overcome the world. And as we tackle this topic today, I pray for supernatural and special grace in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated. You know, you can be a real, you can be a great man or woman spiritually and you can still get to a bad place emotionally. And I'm going to say that multiple times. You can be a great man or woman spiritually and still get to a bad place emotionally. We just heard about David and there's multiple ex examples in scripture. And I want to look at another guy. His name was Elijah. He was a prophet in the Old Testament. He was used of God in some supernatural and significant ways, yet he still battled with depression. Just like David, there was still despair. There was still discouragement. Where are you, God? What happened, God? What's going on, God? Why do I feel like this? Why am I responding like this? What, what, where's my joy? Where's my energy? What, 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 what's happening? And, and the story is in 1 Kings chapter 19, really starts in 18, but we pick up in 19, and, and it says, now Ahab, Ahab was the 19th king during this time. The 19th wicked, there was 19 wicked kings in a row in the history of Judah, and he was number 19, just a bad dude, and, and he told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done. Jezebel was his wife. Jezebel was much worse than Ahab. She was a, she was a bad, bad woman, and, and uh, how Elijah had killed the prophets with the sword. And so in chapter 18, many of you remember where, where Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal and Asher to a battle, and they were going to call fire down from heaven, and whoever's God answered by fire, they would know they were God. And so they built their altar, and the false prophets danced and cut themselves, and, and, and Elijah mocked. Where's your God? Has he gone to the bathroom? Does he even care? And they got no response. And then, God, then Elijah stepped to the, to, the, to the sacrifice that they had built. And he said, bring some water and dump it on it because I'm about to declare to you that this is, not just a, this is not a coincidence. This is the living God. And he called fire down from heaven. And immediately the fire consumed the sacrifice and the false gods went on the run. And uh, Elijah and those that were with him took the life of those false prophets. And so it was a great victory, a great battle. And so Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I don't make your life like that, like that of one of them. Like, like Jezebel gets word, I'm gonna kill you. Just like you killed my false prophets, I'm coming after you. And Elijah was afraid, and, and that kind of boggles my mind. He just stood up to over 800 false prophets, called fire down from heaven, and now he's in fear after a great victory. And, and I just want you to know, sometimes my darkest days are after my greatest victories. There are sometimes after Sunday mornings where, where the, 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 it's one of the greatest maybe services we have. Where when I say great service, I mean worship is just, it's just you just feel the presence of God and people respond and people are hungry and you can just sense God doing something real. Some of those nights, those Sunday nights are where the enemy attacks me the worst. 
Like, like you should have, shouldn't have said that, or somebody's going to get mad at that, or you should have done it this way, or you should have went that way. It's not only in your bad times where, where depression or discouragement can come, but it's also even during your good times. I think I'm just trying to communicate. We've all been there, and if you've not been there, you're potentially going to get there. There's going to there's gonna be some fear. There's going to be some, some, some tough times. There's going to be some potential seasons where you don't feel right internally, and he ran for his life. And, and so much so that he came to Beersheba and Judah, he left his servant there. He went another day's journey into the desert, and he came to a brown tree and sat down, and he prayed that he might die. So, so not just am I discouraged, but, but now I want to take my life. I, I've had enough, Lord. You ever felt like that? I can't do it anymore. It's too much pressure. It's too much stress. It's too much on me. And he, and he said, take my life. I'm ready to go. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. He prayed. There's four levels of depression. And, and I am no professional and I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a counselor. I'm a pastor. But I can share with you in God's word, there, there's this sense of feeling downcast. And downcast is usually wrapped around a circumstance. And it's usually just a bad day or bad days. And we all go through times of downcast where, where something happens. My daughter's getting married. I'm a little downcast because it's going to be, you know, that fellow, he don't know. He's a good, I better not even say anything. But just a little downcast. And uh, I don't like it, but it's going to be all right. And, but then there can be discouragement. And, and downcast is based around circumstances, but discouragement goes to outlook. Like, like downcast is I lost my job, but, but discouragement is I can't get another one and nobody wants me and I'm never going to work again. And, and it and it's, goes from a bad day or bad days to a bad week or a bad month. And then if you're not careful, it can slide into depression. Or I don't even know if it's a step. You could go right to depression. A depression is a bad season. It's like, where are you, God? What's up? I can't seem to shake it. Feels like I'm living under a dark cloud that won't blow over. A, a mood disorder can characterize by extreme stress and poor concentration and sleep problems and loss of appetite and feelings of guilt and helplessness and, and hopelessness. Do you know one in nine people are on antidepressant medicine even right now? And one in five have been on antidepressant meds. Anti Antidepressant prescriptions have risen in the last few years 300% and continue to rise. Depression is the number one health problem in the world. And then there's despair. And despair is everything is wrong and it's not going to get better. Despair is a bad life. Like I just, I'd be better off to those around me, to those, to myself if, if I were just not here. You know, 40,000 people die of of uh, suicide every year. It's the second leading cause of death between 15 and 35 years old. 110 Americans took, take their life every day and another 3,500 try. Listen, suicide is a permanent, irreversible attempt to solve a temporary problem. You don't have to die to end your pain. Nobody's going to be better off if you end it all. I read not long ago, and we see it so much, and it's even so prevalent amongst our teenagers in today's culture, but a young pastor just not long ago took his life. Three kids, beautiful wife, fruitful ministry. Things on the outside looked like they were doing well, but, but he got to a place, I guess, of despair. And, and I would just say there was something wrong. Like there, it, it, He was sick in, in his mind, and, and sickness is not sin. And, and I want us to, to remove the stigma of mental sickness. Because if, if we have physical sickness, everybody's not, nobody's ashamed of that. Everybody's like, that's just how life is. Well, there's mental sickness as well. And I think we attach a stigma to that, that they're less than, or, or, or they're, they're not strong enough, or they're weak. Or, and and we, 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 if we're not careful, we'll just, I want us to remove the stigma of that and call sick, sick. Whether it be physical, emotional, relational, whatever it might be. It could be neurological, it could be chemical, it could be psychological, it could be unresolved abuse or pain. 
And again, that's not my lane, that, that, that despair and depression, uh, they're, they're, that's not, if you need, get some professional help, I, I, I mean, you, we need to take it seriously. Again, you, you, nothing's going to be better. Suicide is a, it's a temporary, solu- it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And I don't want to give you a simple solution to a complex problem. However, I do want you to know God's word is, is not silent when it comes to that kind of struggle. Like Elijah wanted to kill himself and Jeremiah was in a funk most of his ministry. And David openly shared seasons of depression and despair. You can be a godly man or woman and still find yourself in a bad place emotionally. So today I want to talk about how do I get out of that? How do I, how do I guard against that? And I'm not going to give you rocket science, but, but this will help you. If you'll write it down, if you'll take some notes, if you'll put this into practice, number one, slow down and spend time with Jesus. The the number one way that you are going to overcome depression and anxiety and, and fear and stress is you start spending time with Jesus. It's the it's the number one way. Elijah, what, I was at the gym, it's been several years, but, but this, guy, this gal got on the treadmill. And I think we live life like this sometimes. And she got on the treadmill, and I was running not far from her, and, uh, and, and, and she turned the thing up too fast, and it kicked her right off of it. And she went flying backwards. And you could tell she jumped up real quick and looked around. She was more embarrassed than what somebody might have seen. And she tried to hop back on the thing. Why it was still spinning. Don't do that. Bad idea. And this time it kicked her out where she hit the machine behind her and just kind of lay. And, 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 and I think sometimes we do life like that. Like it's just going so fast and we just keep trying to get on the treadmill of life. And if you're not careful, it'll spit you out. It'll, it'll, it'll mess you up. We, we have got, here's what the Bible says, come Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. You, you know what we do? We're tired in the evening, so, so we sit down and watch Tucker Carlson, and he's having an aneurysm already, and it's just going to set. And then we watch Fox News and CNN telling the same story, and they're so opposite, and it just makes your blood boil. And so then we go to the pantry and get some pretzels and some chocolates and some ice cream, and that doesn't help. That just causes more problems. And so then we, well, let's take a trip to Disney, and, and we, we pay hundreds of dollars to sit in 120-degree heat paying $10 for a water bottle, listen to our kids scream. We might make some memories, but it ain't going to fix it. The Bible says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired. He doesn't grow weary. His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Even young people grow tired and weary. Even young people have depression and discouragement. And and they stumble and they fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Well, Well, how do you wait? You, 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 you get in a quiet place. You get alone. And I've asked Kennedy to come. And you, you, get on, you get your Bible and you get your notepad, but you also get some worship music on. There's something about being in the presence of God. Even Saul knew it. And Saul, he, he had demons come on him. And the only way he could get some freedom is if David played his harp. Even, even the anointing of 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 the songwriter and composer and singer, David brought peace to his soul. Worship is God inhabits the praises of his people. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. I I want you to just pause for a minute and see the power of, of worship and praise as it sets a mood and it changes the environment. In a place. Yeah. 
Will you close your eyes and think about the goodness of God for just a second? at me will you there's something just keep playing softly will you can you? there's something about getting in the presence of God and, and and here's the deal you can't take Kennedy home with you she ain't going home with you she got a home you got to find something you got to find a, you got to get on your iPad you got to get wherever you find music and and you've got to usher in the presence of God you got to slow down you got to wait on him I, I'm talking about not I'm talking about daily let it be not just uh, a remedy for despair, but, uh, but a protection against despair. There's something when you get into the presence of God. I, I want to encourage you, if, if you're downcast, if you're depressed, if you're, if you're struggling, again, spending time with Jesus will be the greatest defense against it. Because when you get your eyes on God, you think less about your problem and more about his power. Less about your situation and more about his sovereignty. Less about your circumstances and more about that he is in control. Stress drains in the presence of God and strength is poured in. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Thank you, Kennedy. Here, I want to give you another one. Make relationships a priority. I, 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 uh, Elijah isolated himself. Not only did he, did he, uh, he was afraid, but he ran. He went away from his servant. He went away from people. When, when depression is, it grows in isolation, but it's really a catch-22 because when you're depressed, you want to be isolated, and the more you isolated, the more depression comes on. So you have to make it, you have to, you have to be pro, you, you, proactive in getting around and being around people. You, it, 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 if you got to be willing to share some of your secrets. If you, if you don't share what's going on in your life, you're in trouble. You don't need to tell everybody, but you need to tell somebody. And I say this week after week, maybe not week after week, but so often, small groups are not to load you up with another thing to do already on a busy calendar. It's for your spiritual health and your emotional well-being. It, it, when, when you come here on Sunday morning, we can ask you how you're doing, and you can put a smile on your face, and on the outside, everything can look good, but on the inside, there could be turmoil and, and confusion and chaos and, and unrest and, 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 and even on the verge of, of something you'll, you'll, you'll regret for the rest of your life, but in small groups, that should not happen. Listen, small groups is not a mini church service. It's not a, a, just a Bible study where you can do church on a smaller level. It's meant to be a place where you can take your mask off, where you can get to know somebody personally. So when you ask them what's going on, what's up with your life, they can't run from it. They, they can't. Everything's fine. No, it's not. I know you better than that. Something's wrong. Honey, lock the door. We're not letting him out until he tells us what's wrong so we can encourage him and pray for him. What we need, we need that. Get in a group. Get in a group. Be a part of a group. Take your mask off. Uh, you got blind spots and deaf spots and dumb spots. You need somebody in your life that can, that can point that out and can come alongside you to encourage you. Here's one of our values. We make room for life giver. We make room. We don't have room. We don't have time. But they're so important. They're so valuable. We make room for them because we're better together. Together. We, we is always better than me. A friend was born for adversity. Don't wait till you need a friend. Make a friend. The best way to to, to, to create or have a friend, you know this, is to be friendly. And if you're not in a small group, you can go on our website page, see Pastor John. John will connect you. He'll help you. Get in a group. Get in a group because two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. And if one of them falls down and gets discouraged and depressed and, depressed and down, downcast and in despair, the other one can help them up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one there to help them. And if two lie down together, they'll keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands, put Jesus in the middle of it, is not quickly broken. 
Get in a group. Here's another thing. Focus on the positive. Elijah went to the cave that night and and God showed up. And he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? That was God talking to Elijah. And Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you. They've torn down your altars. They killed every one of your prophets. I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. Well, well, let's break down that, that, that response that Elijah gave. And this is many of our responses sometimes. We, we focus on the negative instead of focusing on the pot. I've been zealous for the Lord Almighty. That's what Elijah said. That's true. The Israelites have rejected the covenant. That's true. They've broken down God's altars. That's true. Put the, I, I put the prophets, uh, the false prophets to death by the sword. That's true. I'm the only one left. Here's what Elijah said. I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. That's false. He was not the only one left. God had reserved 7,000 other prophets that had not bowed their knee to a false God. Here's what he was saying. I've been doing all the work. I'm the only one who cares. I'm the only one who can get it done. There's no one who cares like me. Everybody is dependent on me. I'm all alone. Nobody understands. And God responds. Those are lies. And here's my marriage is not ever going to be restored. But I would say nothing is impossible with God. My kids are never going to come to Christ. God's not willing that any should perish. My life is never going to get better. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. It's plans to prosper you and not to harm you. I'm stuck in a dead-end job. No, if you'll trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean out on your own understanding, if you'll acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. I can't make a difference. No, you were created in Christ Jesus to do good works. I'm never going to get well. No, by his strength stripes, you are healed. Replace the lies with the truth. Don't focus on the negative. Stand on his promises. Uh, We have prayer every Wednesday, and we had it last night, and and, uh, if you're wanting to be on that intercessor team, let me know, and and I'll send you the dates, and and, and we gather to pray, and and just really to believe God for great things, And, and I told him I was praying for we, I was preaching on depression today, and Mary, she's one that comes faithfully. She said, I battled with depression for years. And uh, I, I heard a sermon one time. Here's her story. I heard a sermon one time, and the preacher said, quit, quit agreeing with the voice in your head that you have depression. Because she said, I'd wake up every morning, and I'd hear a voice say, you're depressed. And so I'd walk around going all day and thinking all day, I'm so depressed. I'm so depressed. I'm so depressed. And so she started responding when she would hear that voice, and, and, and she goes, no, I'm not depressed. I'm more than a conqueror. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. She started preaching to herself, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard my heart and my mind. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Thou, O Lord, art a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my Head. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are saved. She began to preach and, and declare and stand on the promises of God. And today she's healed and she's free and, and, and fear is gone and faith is replaced. And when she starts sliding down that path, she starts preaching again. You say, but pastor, my life is so hard, I don't feel good, I haven't been treated well. Remember, life is a blend of laughter and tears, of triumph and challenges. It's a combination of sunshine and rain. And you don't have to wait for everything to be perfect to choose joy, for all your problems to be resolved for you to be happy. You don't don't have to forego peace till you lose a certain amount of weight or you find the right spot, right spouse, or you get the next promotion. Here's what I mean. Get off the island called someday. Someday I'll be happy. When I make more money, when I get a new home, when I retire, when, 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 stop going and, and stop thinking about tomorrow. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in, a, in it. When you get up in the morning, you have a choice to make. It's up to you. Choices lead, feelings follow. Choose to be grateful, not resentful. Choose to think on the positive, not the negative. Choose to smile, not to frown. Choose to enjoy life, not to endure life. Choose to have a positive attitude and and see the size of your God, not the size of your mountain. Listen, you're doing better than you think. 
You say, you don't, you, no, 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 I'm not. I'm depressed. I'm discouraged. I'm in despair. I've got cancer. I've got an addiction. I'm a single mom without much help. Why would you say, Pastor, you're doing better than you think? Because you're in church this morning worshiping God. You're listening to his word. You're not in a funeral home. You're not in a rehab. You're not in the street somewhere. You're in the house of God in God's presence with God's people. It's better than you think. You know, in Ecclesiastes 28, Ecclesiastes Solomon says there's 28 seasons There's a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to plant and there's a time to uproot. There's a time to tear down and a time to build up. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. 28 times he tells us there's a time for something. But not one time did he say it's time to quit or give up or throw in the towel. Why? Because you got a God that loves you, a Savior who died for you, a Holy Spirit that wants to encourage you, and a plan and a purpose ordained for you. Take every thought captive. Stop focusing on the negative. Think on things that are true and just and honest and pure and lovely and of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on those things. And and, and Paul said, then God's peace will be with you. Here, listen, slow down and spend time with Jesus. Make uh, relationships a priority. Focus on the positive and remember his faithfulness. You got to continually remind yourself. Here's, here's Elijah. He's ready to kill himself. He's forgot about just, just in months prior what God had already done. Not just that he had just conquered. Elijah didn't, Elijah didn't create that fire. God caused that fire. I mean, he needed to remember when there was a severe drought, God took Elijah to a little place beside a brook and and a raven brought him food and he was able for just a terrible drought where other people were dying and and, and, and losing loved ones. God God protected and provided for him. When when the brook dried up, he went to a lady in Zarephath who just had a little bit of meal and and she was about to bake her last little bread and going to die and and miraculously, God provided where the oil never ran out and the meal never, never went away. God just did it over and over and over again. And I, I, wonder, I wonder if Elijah would have been in the state that he was if he would have looked back on the things that God had already done. And you know, I, I, just a few weeks ago, I was going through a bad season. And you say, pastors aren't supposed to go through that. Stop. I'd say shut up, but it's not very nice, so... We all go through seasons like that. And I was discouraged and I was getting downcast and I could see myself sliding. And I was preaching to myself and encouraging myself. But, but, but then I began to remember, and, and this is what happened. I went and started, I spent some time with the Lord and God gave me a new perspective. And he reminded me, I've been in this season before. This is not a new season. It just seems so new and fresh to me. And he began to remind me of the exact same thing that he delivered me from and got me out of that I was going through right then. And I began to say, God, you did it before and you can do it again. And God, I'm not dead. You you helped me and I I didn't lose everything. And, and, And you know how you just, a little thing can just blow up and get bigger than it really is. And I'd allowed a little thing to blow up and get bigger than it really was. And I just remember, I just started thinking about the faithfulness of God. God, you've been so faithful to me over the years. And, And there's, there's something about it when you just remember God's faithfulness. We all go through seasons, but here, here's, here's what I know. God doesn't want you living in the mully grubs. Amen. He doesn't want you living joyless. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he wants the people of God free. He wants the people of God to be a testimony to, the, to a watching world of his goodness and grace. He wants, you to, he wants you to be able to respond to challenges with hope. He wants you to be able to walk through difficulties with peace. He, he, wants, you, he wants you to be able to live in a culture, in a, in a time where things are chaotic, with joy. He, 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 I'm telling you, God wants you whole. He wants you healthy. He wants you healed. It gives him great joy to see his children overcoming and moving forward. You you know, I'm reminded of 
of, of Job and in the, in the Old Testament, God was, Satan came to God and I don't understand it, but this is what the Bible says. And, and, and God was bragging on Job. If you consider my servant Job, look at him. Man, he's serving me, living for me, honoring me, walking, he fears me. That's a good dude. Job is righteous. And Satan says, why sure he's righteous. He's got everything he needs. He's rich, he's wealthy. He's got all kinds of resources. Who couldn't live for God in that environment? You know why I don't let the devil condemn me? Because he couldn't live for God in that environment. Listen to me, get this. He, he, he tells you, he beats you up, condemns you for the very thing he couldn't do. I remind him, you couldn't live for God in heaven. And I'm trying to live for God on earth. You couldn't live for God when there was no sin and no devil. And I'm living for God with sin all around me and the devil constantly coming at me. You couldn't live for God when there was no struggle, no challenge, no disappointment. And I'm living for God in a world that's full of tribulation. And I'm still trusting his sovereignty and resting in his love and experiencing his presence. Satan, shut up. You have no right to condemn me of anything. And then Job lost his finances and his fortune and his family. Here, it's one thing to worship God when everything's going nice and, and everybody's getting along and, and because your family's blessed, it's another thing to worship God when there's challenges and difficulties and trials and tribulation and heartbreak. Here's what I know. When you can praise in the pain, when you can say the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, blessed be the name of the Lord, you're on your way up out of depression and into freedom. So what do you do? You slow down and spend time with Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Seek first the kingdom of God. And listen, listen, listen. Please listen to me. Spend time with Jesus. And all these things will be added unto you. Make, make relationships a priority. Two are, are better than one. A strand of three cords is not easily broken. Focus on the positive. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases, who, cre who redeems my life from the pit and crowns me with love and compassion, who restores my, my energy like, like, a, like, like a youth and it's, and it's uh, so that again, so that I can mount up on wings like eagles and remember the Lord's faithfulness. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. Amen, everybody. Stand with me, will you?